Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 with NK Maribor. It is season two. We are already through the first European Champions League qualifying round. Today we're going to have the second qualifying phase up against Dundalk FC. Now, this isn't going to be an easy game because I'm pretty sure last season they didn't do too badly in the qualifying rounds. We should hopefully be able to get past them. Before we talk about the first qualifying round, I want to give you a quick summary of some of the transfers that you might have missed if you missed the last episode. So, in January, we managed to pick up six players. Christian Maffler, Eddie Hernandez, Stefan Field, Daniel Rossero, Tillen Klemenic, and David Castaneda. We also loaned some players out. Those people came in in January. In July or June or whenever it was, we brought in some more players. £625,000 was spent on Jan Humar from Gorishka, central midfielder from Slovenia, so he is going to count as homegrown, got a bit of potential, probably not as good as he really needs to be if he wants to stay in the team for a long time, but he's here as a backup. The first of a number of African players that we've signed and then loaned out to Slovenian teams. So, Mohamed Ferhat is an Algerian left-back, has gone out on loan to Versailles, who I believe are in the second division of Slovenia. Got a load of determination, a load of potential as well. He's hopefully going to get some football there, but also the main reason why he's gone to Slovenia is because he's going to hopefully become slowly Slovenian. It's going to take five years. Another future Slovenian is going to be Isidore Bakayoko, who has signed from AFA Di Jekanu. He has cost £130,000, but look at this man. This man has got some stats there. 18 determination. He's got 15 free kicks, 13 first touch, 14 passing in technique, 15 work rate. He looks like he's a good footballer. He's a natural Mazala as well. He might, might be going out on loan as long as a Slovenian side wants him. Otherwise, he's probably going to play the odd game here and there. Next up is Ivorian central defender Chris Diamande. He's gone out on loan immediately to Ruda Valenia. He's already played a game for them as well, so that's good. He's going to be playing first team football for a whole year and slowly becoming Slovenian. He signed for £250,000, by the way. Next through the door is Hosu Hemi, or Hosu Jamie, the Mozambican central midfielder. I kind of, I'm not going to lie, I bought him because he was from Mozambique. He does have a little bit of potential. Gone out on loan to. Billy, Billy, Billy G or Bill, Billy Jean, Bilja, who I'm hoping is Slovenia. I think they are. They are a Slovenian side. He's coming for four hundred and seventy-five pounds, not even half of a of one thousand. He's cheap. And finally, the last player to come in is eighteen-year-old Nigerian right-sided midfielder who's going to hopefully be a right back by the time he plays for us. Ifenye Okore. He's gone out on loan to Dakani for the season. They are also a Slovenian second division side. He's come in for £190,000. He's going to be another player who I hope will be Slovenian in five years' time. So yeah, so far, we've not really spent a lot of money. £1.3 million. What I'm going to plan to do is the money will be spent if we get into the group stages. If we don't get into the group stages, there's no point in spending lots of money, I don't think. You can see they're on the right-hand side as well. A lot of players have left. Some of them have gone for a bit of money as well. Leon Marinic has gone to Brentford. Jasmine Mesanovic has gone to Napradak. Alexandre Kretu has gone to Trnava. Sasa Ivkovic to Partizan. Mateus Quiros has left the club and gone to ALA in Brazil. I don't know who they are. Kinan Piric has gone to Hajduk Split in Croatia. And finally, down the bottom there, you can see Eddie Hernandez for £475,000 has gone to Foggia. He played three games for us, was terrible. Glad we got rid of him. Two of the players we had last season as well have now retired. Marco Sula is one. He's now an assistant manager and a terrible one. And Jasmine Handanovic is now a director of football and he's not a good one of them either. Let's talk about matches, shall we? Like I said at the start of the episode, we have already played two games in the Champions League qualifiers. We drew Albanian side Lachi, Lassie, not sure. Anyway, we beat them. First match was a 2-1 victory. Joe Rowley and Luka Zahovic with the goals for us. Adis Hodzic managed to get himself sent off for two yellow cards just before half-time. Ansi Nika scored for Lazzi, but it was not enough, although there was a second leg. But as you can tell, we won, so it doesn't matter. The second leg was quite dull. It was a 1-0 victory for us. Lapis Kiakis. Great, that's a great name. Lapis Kiakis. Is he real? He is real. He's also not terrible. Hmm. Lassie also got a player sent off in the second half as well. Saf... There are three... There, is there three J? There's two J's in his name. That man got himself sent off. We go through 3-1 on aggregate. Also, we've played a league game against Triglav. 2-0 victory. Hodzic and Pila with the goals. And Gregor Bajda missed a penalty. Good on him. 
We get into the matches against Dundalk in a second. I just want to bring your attention to the transfer budgets. We've still got £8.7 million to spend, and we are well under our wage budget as well. We are literally halfway to our limit of our wage budget at the moment, so we've got a lot of money to spend. Before we get to the Dundalk game, we've signed a new player. It is a 22-year-old Slovenian goalkeeper from Gorichka. If you notice, Gorichka uh, often seem to have their players raided from us because they're one of the better Slovenian siders. Gorichka, I think Ruda Valenia are pretty decent, and Domzele, and obviously Maribor. So that's normally the three teams that we're going to raid. Gregor Sorkan is the goalkeeper in quest, and he's signed for 120k? 210k, there you go. So he's probably going to be our first choice goalkeeper because we only are allowed to play three foreign players, and I don't really want one of them to be our goalkeeper at the moment. More transfer news. Anel Hazrik has left. He's gone to Rudar Valenia. We were never going to play him. And like I just said earlier, the foreign player rule, being Bosnian, he counts as foreign. And we've signed another player. This time it is 19-year-old Nigerian defender Victor Sodja. He has joined from Niger Tornadoes. And he's not really cost a lot of money. Um, I'm not really sure how much. Oh, free transfer. There you go. That's how much money he cost. Absolutely nothing. He's probably not great. He's got four-star potential. Going to try and loan him out because he needs to get football somewhere. And Cremonese have loaned Gregor Bajda. Another one's joined, this time Algerian striker, Ab Abderim Ab Abderimane Uaskak. That's definitely going to have to change. He signed from ES Setif in uh, Algeria, £95,000. Decent looking player, four star potential, needs to go out on loan. Champions League qualifying round, second qualifying round, first leg up against the Republic of Ireland's Dundalk. It's not going to be an easy game. I don't know who they played in their last fixture. Let's have a quick check. Ah, TNS, the New Saints, or what used to be called TN Solutions. So they had an all-UK-ish tie against uh, the Welsh side. So let's see how well we do in the Republic of Ireland. The starting lineup we are going to go for. Bledar Hajdini will be the goalkeeper because Gregor Sorkan is not registered because he signed a day after the actual Champions League squads needed to be uh, submitted. So Hajdini will be the keeper. Tillen Klemenic, Daniel Rosario, and Alexander Rysovic will be the back three. Hodzic will be the right sided fullback. Christian Maffler will be the left sided fullback. Alex Pilo will be partnered by Isidore Bakayoko in the centre of the pitch because Bakayoko is a natural Mazala. He's already two star ability, got a bit more potential as well I'm thinking he's probably going to be one of the uh, the few African players that I've signed that will probably be playing a lot this season Joe Rowley the Englishman will be behind the strike partnership of Luka Zahovic and the and Mr Maribor Marcos Taveras now I don't see the point in investing heavily in expensive players unless I manage to get Champions League group stage football again so this season we need to get Champions League group stage football, and you might find in two or three episodes' time, we suddenly start spending £1 million plus on players, which doesn't sound like a lot of money, but considering so far the most I've spent is about 600 k it's a lot of money to spend. First highlight of the game, and Taveras is running in on goal. We're 20 seconds in, he's hit it over the bar and straight into a car park. 1 minute and 20 seconds on the clock. Pilo with a tackle but doesn't close the ball down O'Brien gets the ball for Dundalk it's cleared but only as far as O'Donnell Benson Benson's probably going to have to play out to the left hand side he does eventually do it Massey across to O'Donnell again O'Brien forward Connolly into the area crosses it Rosero heads clear Pilo further Bakayoko lumps it upfield it's not going to get its way past Gartland Zahovic gets it across to nobody two players not one of them paying attention enough to get the ball Burn back to McKennelly McKellany runs forward, Connolly once again in the area, crosses in, Duffy's at the back, Duffy's effort is just over the bar, Dundalk putting all the pressure on early, O'Brien with a throw for Dundalk, we are 15 minutes in, crossed in, Duffy is going to get the ball but it's not the best cross, Duffy across to Benson in the area and Robbie Benson has made it 1-0 to Dundalk, that is not the thing that we want to happen, this entire season could last like two episodes. Straight after the goal we have another highlight though, Rysovic with the ball for us. On the left to Maffler. Tries to play inside to Rowley but doesn't manage to do it. And now Dundalk once again with the ball. O'Brien. McKennelly. McKennelly all the way across to Duffy. 
Duffy to Benson. He doesn't get it back. Ioko does. Luka Zahovic is now running on. Tavares is going to be the only one in there. If he wants to use him, he goes it alone. Rogers makes the save. We do get a corner. 17 minutes on the clock. Who is going to take the corner? Peeler takes it. Burn can head it clear. And we're going to get a throw on, which we probably won't get to see because nothing ever really comes from throw ons. Corner for Dundalk. O'Brien takes it. Edge of the six yard box. It's cleared. Tavares heads further, but only as far as Benson. Connolly. McKenney who has managed to pick up an injury. O'Brien with the ball. Benson, edge of the area, bit of space, has a go, hits it just wide of the post, could have got his second of the game. We do get to see the goal kick. Hajdini to Klemenic. Hodzic. Hodzic, ball forward. Marcos Tavera, who's now 67 years old. He's got two in the box, cross in. Zahavic is one of them, and Zahavic's effort is just over the bar. It's going to be a goal kick. Hajdini with a goal kick for Maribor. We are approaching half-time. I just want a goal. Just get an away goal. If we draw one all, that's fine. We'll have the away goal. Tavares with the ball. Zahavic is in the middle. If he can find him, he crosses in. Zahavic is there. And Luka Zahavic does get the away goal that we need. It is one all. Number seven there. Not happy with a linesman who didn't actually exist. Massey with a throw. Not quite at half time yet. McKelleny. Isn't, doesn't get tackled. Connolly's there. We are back to being behind. It's 2-1. Dylan Connolly with a goal. Still not at half time, and we've got another highlight. Bakayoko across to Klemenic. Forward Hodzic. Klemenic was going to be a wing back, probably more of a central defender now. Forlan. Forward, but Hodzic is going to get the ball back. It's not Forlan, it's Folan. Rosero's not going to get there. Rysovic does. Maffler. Bakayoko. Bakayoko to Rowley. Rowley to Zahavic in the area. Luka Zahavic has hit the bar, and Dundalk have managed to clear their lines. And that was it. That went straight into half time, that clearance. We are. See, are we unlucky? We're not unlucky. We're not doing very well. Christian Maffler not having a very good game. Let's shout. Let's let's shout at people. And then maybe we do a sub. Maffler is going to be coming off for Dino Hottich. Maffler's not had a very good game at all. Hopefully Hottich, who's actually now kind of somewhat good at being a left back. It's taken him an entire season, but he can actually do it now. Hopefully the Slovenian, who's still pretty young, can actually get some results on that left-hand side. Are we going to see anything from the first highlight? Zahavic tries to find Hosdic. It's cleared. Rysovic lumps the ball forward. He's going to try and find Dino Hotic, but doesn't do it. Dundalk now try to clear their lines, but Hotic does get the ball. I can see this highlight going nowhere, and I'm just talking for the sake of it. Hold on. Tavera's into the area. Two in the box. Crossed in. Zahavic is one of them. And Luka Zahavic, 42 seconds into the second half, has made it 2-2, and that is another away goal. He goes and celebrates in front of the uh, Dundalk fans, which was a bit harsh of him, I think. Corner for Dundalk. McKelleny is still on the pitch. Hosdic. Hosdic. Hasdini, sorry. Does a questionable save, but now we are counter-attacking. Zahavic with the ball. Tavera's bit of space on the left-hand side. Four players in the box, or three in the box. Finds one of them. It's Joe Rowley. No, it's not. It's Isidore Bakayoko. I don't think he ever meant that. I, I really... That looked like Joe Rowley did it. Isidore Bakayoko. Is the, he's claiming it. The uh, young Ivorian, I think. I want to see what happened here. So Tavera's gets the ball. Bakayoko's definitely there. I think Rowley kicks it into Bakayoko. I think that's what happened. So Bakayoko somehow managed to fluke a goal. O'Brien with a throw for Dundalk. We are back in the lead. I say back in the lead. We are in the lead. Crossed in. O'Donnell edge of the area. Is he going to have a go? He does have a go. Hajdini with a great save. But Benson stoops in. Stoops in. Swoops in. To make it 3 all. We're not great at defending, are we? Hodzic with a throw on. Try. What a terrible throw. What is the point in throw-ons in this game? Is there a way to stop people, like, just throwing it to anyone? Hotic has cleared. Zahavic is going to run onto that, isn't he? He's going to get there first. He does get there first. Across to Tavares. Mr. Marable in the area. Forces a save from Rogers. Well, that was a bit of a weird counter-attack. Corner is going to be taken by Peeler, who's got a yellow card. Crosses into the six-yard box. Clemenich is there. Tavares is there, and it's over the bar. Corner for Dundalk. O'Brien takes it towards the six-yard box. Duffy is there. We are 4-3 down. Seven goals so far, and we've played an hour of football. Defensively, we are poor, I think. <laughs> 6.2 and a 6.3 is not great. Right, Clemenich is coming off for Kolenk. I want to do another sub. Rowley for Kramerich. That is all of our subs. I wanted to bring on Castaneda. He's not actually played a game for us yet. Castaneda's a very good footballer, but when you've got Tavares... And Zahovic up front. It's very difficult for him to actually break in. Back of Yoko. Crossfield ball. Tries to find Dino Hotic. He's got four in the box. If he can cross it in. He does cross it in. Tavares is there. Hodzic was there as well. It's over the bar. It's going to be a goal kick. 
Into the final 15 minutes, Hotic is throw in, finds Kramaric, Pilar, forward, Bakayoko, Tavares heads across to Kramaric again, tries to find either Zahovic or Hotic, but doesn't find either of them. Rogers forward to Massey. Massey's long ball upfield is intercepted. Kramaric gets the ball, runs out wide and plays it all the way back. Kolenk to Bakayoko. Forward, Taveras into the area. He's deserved the goal and what a finish that is. Marcos Taveras, Isidore Bakayoko with the assist. 76 minutes on the clock. It is four all in the Republic of Ireland. Bakayoko with a corner towards the six-yard box. Pilar is there. It's cleared off the line and it's going to be a throw-on. Why was Bakayoko taking the corner and Pilar in the middle? I don't know why. Five or so minutes left to play. Benson's header is claimed by Hajdini. Now... What is the Kosovan keeper going to do? Rolls it out to Rajcevic. Of course he does. Who plays it all the way across to nobody. So Dundalk coming back at us. Duffy with a ball. Number seven with his mohawk. Hodzic, great tackle. Rajcevic clears Zahovic. He's got Tavares to his right. O'Donnell makes a great tackle for Dundalk. Forward to Connolly on the right-hand side over the halfway line. He's got Hotic for company. Gets tackled. Zahovic with the ball. Across to Kramaric. Kramaric can't find Tavares. Now Benson, who I think might be on a hat-trick. Connolly. Connolly runs out to the right-hand side. He's being chased all the way by Alex Peeler, and Peeler does get the ball. Take your time. Take your time. Maybe find Hotic or just lump it upfield. Route one football. Luka Zahovic, great tackle, but Marcos Tavares gets the ball. It is 5-4. We have five away goals, but they've got four goals as well. So we can, in theory, lose 1-0 at the moment. 1-0 at home, and we will go through, but losing 2-0, and we'll go out. Quite an exciting game for the first game of the season. Hashdini to Rajcevic. This is a proper highlight as well. We've still got a minute and a half to play. Kramaric, Bakayoko, Dino Hotic through ball, finds Hodzic in the area. Hodzic has a go. Tavares is going to get on the end of the save. Tavares to Hotic, plays it across. Hodzic isn't going to get the ball. He's just about going to keep it in. And now Dundalk can clear their lines. But Kolenk managed to keep it in play. What is going on? This is going to be 5 all, isn't it? This is going to be 5 all. Pila interceptable. Back to Rosero. Rosero to Kolenk. Hodzic. Hodzic absolutely shattered. Luka Zahovic. Forward finds Tavares. He's got Bakayoko making a run. Zah Zahovic with the ball. Bakayoko's at the back. If he can find him, he can't find him. Bakayoko is there. Tavares is there. It is 6-4. Isidore Bakayoko sets up Tavares once again. We've got like 20 seconds of normal time to play, but there's, in theory, probably going to be about 7 minutes of injury time. First highlight of the five minutes of injury time. Zahovic with the ball across. Bakayoko finds Hotic in the area. It's hit about six players. Tavares is there. It is 7-4. Marcos Tavares has now scored a hat-trick. He hadn't even scored a goal up until about the 70th minute. He's now got himself a hat-trick. Not going to lie, wasn't expecting this game to go this way. We've got 30 seconds left to play. Hotic crosses it in. Hotic has hit the bar. Duffy's going to manage to get it clear. It could have been eight. could have been 8-4. The highlight is carrying on, which worries me. I'm hoping it's just going to be the end of the game highlight. Connolly with the ball. On the right-hand side, he's got the right-back for company. He takes it around two players, cross in. Rajcevic has kicked the ball off for a corner. So we've got... We've, we've hit 95. Are they even going to get the chance to take the corner? Duffy is going to take it. There's only five players in the box. Rosero heads clear. Zahovic is going to hopefully get there first. He doesn't. Connolly crosses it. Follen's there. And Stephen Follen has made it 7-5. What is going on here? Now this better be the final highlight of the game. We've scored in the last like 10 minutes. There's been five goals. Hotic with the ball on the left. We are one minute over the 95. The keeper claims it. It is over. It is 7-5 in the Republic of Ireland. Doesn't look like anyone's defence decided to turn up, but the strike force certainly did. A 10.0 rating for Tavares. Four goals, three assists. Zahovic with two goals as well. Bakayoka with a goal and three assists on his debut. Things look promising although we do concede a lot of goals well up next we've got a game against Olympia in the league and then we're going to have the second leg against Dundalk I hope it's not another 7-5 I can't be dealing with that well this could have gone better against Olympia in the league we have managed to win 2-1 Kramaric with a goal and Versic with a penalty however Rosero and Zahovic have both gone off injured I already know Zahovic is out for quite a while He's out for four to five weeks. That's not good for the player who scored, I don't even know how many goals it was. It was something like 45 goals last season in all competitions. 34. There you go, not 45. What is Rosero's injury? Don't be bad. Okay, he's two to three weeks. I think we should probably do the specialist. 
dislocated his jaw. Can you not just wear like a face mask or something? Just before the Olympia game, we did make two new sign-ins. Lapis Kiakis was the first one from our previous opponents, Laxi. He has been signed for £80,000. He's got two-star current ability, two-and-a-half-star potential ability. He's, he's not as good as I, I thought he was. He's great headering the ball. Probably about it. And we have also signed Algerian goalkeeper Abdallah Bujalmuna. Maybe. I think I think that's probably about right. He has come in from WA Timeken Timesen in Algeria. Sixty-six thousand pounds. This is the reason why. Twenty determination. Decisions are pretty good as well. Aerial reach of fourteen. He's got some decent stats for a young goalkeeper. One and a half star current ability, four star potential. He's going to hopefully go out on loan with Istra 1961 wanting him, but I want him to go to Slovenia, really. Also, Luka Usakovic has gone out on loan to Radomelj, whoever they are. A couple more days have passed and we've got a bit more transfer news. Matija Vila, who has been at Maribor since 2010, has moved on. He's gone to Austria. He's signed for Wacker Isnabruk, I think it's Austria. He's signed £220,000. I didn't really need him. He's getting on a bit. I've got Christian Maffler, who's pretty decent. So I thought, well, we'll sell him while we still can. Also, Albanian shadow striker Valon Amedi has gone as well. He's signed for SV Horn, which I believe is also an Austrian side. £250,000. He was one of those players that I wanted to keep. I mean, technically and mentally, he's very good. He is 23 years old. I think he actually counts as a foreign footballer as well. No, he's not. He's part Italian. Why did I... I probably shouldn't have sold this guy. Also, David Castaneda has gone out on loan. He's gone to... Alcaron, who I want to say a Mexican. They are Spanish. He's gone on loan to Spain for the season. And there's going to be one more player joining before the Dundalk game. From BJ Foundation in what I assume is probably going to be Nigeria, 19-year-old Nigerian goalkeeper Emeka Okoro has signed on a free transfer. My scouts probably lied to me. They said he was nearly five-star potential, four-and-a-half-star potential to be precise. He still might be good. He's still only young. He probably needs to go on loan to a Slovenian team. Dundalk time. Now, all we need to do is not lose by two goals. or Sorry, two goals or more. If we lose by two, we're fine. So if we lose by three, then we go out. And then if they score seven and we score five, then it goes to extra time and penalty. It's unlikely it's going to go to extra time and penalties, this one. I have a feeling as well we might know who we play in the next round. I'm going to have a check. Yes, so the next round... We could be up against Ster Bucharest or IFK Gothenburg. Um, I know who I want to play, and it's not Ster Bucharest. The starting lineup we're going to go for then in goal is Bledar Hajdini, Kermanec, Kolenk, and Rajcevic will be the back three. Kolenk, by the way, is the player who I signed who was a midfielder who is uh, becoming a ball playing defender because he's got some good stats to be a ball playing defender. He's 5'11. So he's not the tallest in the world, coming from me, who's five foot seven. But he's he's not ideal for a centre back. But as a ball player, one he's probably okay. The full backs will be Martin Milic and Christian Maffler. Alex Pilar will partner Isidore Bakayoko in the centre of the pitch. On the bench, we do have Blaz Verhovic, who was actually injured at the start of the season. So he is ready to come back. Realistically, Pilar and Verhovic should be our two central midfielders. But after the performance that Isidore Bakayoko put in in the last match, I think it's probably worth playing him again. Joe Rowley will be the shadow striker. Kramerich and Taveras will be the strikers because of all the injuries we've got. Just realised on the subs bench, I don't actually have a central defender, and I've got two right backs. Looking at the Dundalk team then, it looks basically the same as what we played against last time, doesn't it? I've, this man's name, it rings a bell. That's probably why. Former Manchester United and Everton player. Okay, Sam Byrne, right. I feel like I shouldn't start clicking on these. I didn't do this at all. Former Celtic player, by the looks of it, came through their youth system. Michael Duffy did. Who else we got? McKellany. McKellany is only 25 years old, formerly of Sunderland, so he came through their youth team. He's very good. Quite like the look of him. I mean no disrespect to the Dundalk team, but they do look like a whole load of English rejects. Most of these players have played for an English club of some kind. There's former Ipswich players and Sunderland players and Newcastle players in there, so they're not, they're not good footballers. They're probably better than some of ours, though. I feel like I've just offended half of the Republic of Ireland. What I'm after is a nil-nil draw. I just want zero highlights for the entire game, and then we go through 7-5 on aggregate. 
I guess we should probably keep an eye on the uh, uh, Stair Bucharest Gothenburg game. However, I've just seen that Stair Bucharest are 4 0 up after the first leg. So I think it's safe to say we're probably going to be playing against Stair Bucharest in the next round if we go through. Kramerich is rolling onto that. Hopefully, Kramerich can put it away. What a finish that is from Martin Kramerich. Martin Milic with the assist 10 minutes in. 1 0 to us. 8 5 on aggregate. So just don't concede four now is basically the rule, isn't it? Kolink with a free kick. Milic gets it. Rowley in the middle. Kramaric. Tavares plays it across. Yes, he does. Maffler gets it. Takes a bad touch. Crosses in anyway. Milic is there. Milic's header is just wide of the post. Maffler with a throw. No one to throw to, apparently. And, yep, true to form. Doesn't find one of our players. McKennelly runs forward. Finds Byrne. Peeler takes the ball off him now. Kramaric is going to be one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Has a go. Rattles the bar. And Gartland can get it clear. Could have been 2-0. Another highlight. It's going to be 7-5 again, isn't it? Rogers' goal kick finds Connolly on the halfway line. Tries to go around Maffler. Doesn't manage to do it. Tries to cross field ball instead to Duffy. Benson to McKellany. I can never say his name probably. McKell it is McKellany, isn't it? O'Brien chests it down. Maffler takes the ball off him, though, and just smashes it upfield towards Tavares. Tavares controls it. He's got Kramerich to his right. Kramerich, number 97, puts it in the bottom corner. We are 2-0 to the good. It's 9-5 now. I think at this stage of the game, it's safe to say we're going to be going through. Let's take a quick look at the other game. Gothenburg are 0-0, but as you can see there, it is 4-0 to the good for Stair Buka rest. Dundalk with a goal kick one minute before the half time mark. McKelleny across field finds O'Brien. Forward to Connolly. Connolly seems to get a lot of the ball on their right hand side, but then never really does too much with it. Benson, McKelleny again, Duffy on the left. Duffy's waiting for the fullback to make a run, I would have thought. Doesn't manage to get the ball through. O'Brien. O'Brien's going to play forward to Connolly again into the area. He does that a lot. Crosses in. Colink can clear. Only as far as Benson. Benson has a go. And Robbie Benson has scored again. I'd love to be able to keep a clean sheet. I feel like that's our, going to be one of our main problems this season is actually keeping clean sheets. It's half time. We are 2-1 up. It is 9-6 on aggregate. Uh, there's there's still 45 minutes to play. So it could there, there could be like seven goals in this. Corner for Dundalk. McKellenly takes it. Byrne at the front post. O'Brien's there as well. Joey O'Brien has made it 2-2 on the night. Joey O'Brien, hold on. Yep, yep, that's the former West Ham one. Okay, he's definitely... A, this is what I mean. There's a lot of, like, English reject. Although he's probably not so much a reject. He's just old now. Anyway, it's 2-2. Still still well, well in our, in our control. But they've scored again. 55 minutes on the clock. Byrne with the ball. Runs forward, plays it across, finds the left-back Massey. Massey to Duffy in the area. Duffy across, McKennelly's there. He's hit the post and Rysevich can clear. Should have been 3-2 to Dundalk, arguably. Maffler's throw finds Tavares. Maffler gets the ball back. I need to do some subs. Tavares again. Back to Yoko. Is he going to get another goal? He's had a shot. It's, what's happened there? He didn't have a shot. He had a pass. Right, substitution time. Rowley is coming off because he's having a terrible game. Dev Versic is going to come on. Pilo is also going to come off for Verhovic. Do I do one more substitution? Klemenk, or Klemenic, sorry, for Koblar, who was the central defender that I put on the bench. I've just all, used all three subs in 63 minutes. Final 15 minutes of the game. Hajdini's free kick to Rysovic. Forward, long ball, finds Kramaric, chests it down. Tavares is there. One touch, one shot, one goal for Marcos Tavares. That might be, it's, prob it's probably his second goal of the game, isn't it? Not going to lie, though, was a pretty good finish from the old man of Maribor, Marcos Tavares. Oh, that was his first goal of the game. Also, it's 10-7 on aggregate now. I don't think Dundalk are coming back into this. Five minutes to play. McKennelly running forward with a ball for Dundalk. He's got a player off to his right-hand side. It is Mountney, who's just come on the pitch by the looks of it. McKennelly again. Benson has a touch, has a go, hits it just over the bar. We've got five minutes left. Dundalk needs to find... Like, four goals, I think, which I don't think they're going to do. Rysovic now with the ball across. Is that a good pass or a bad pass? Martin Milic does get it. He has a very quick pass to Kramaric. Kramaric now, who is on a hat-trick, bear in mind, has a go from outside the area. Hits it well wide. Probably should have passed it. 40 seconds left to play, then. It's looking like we are going to be playing against Steya Bucharest in the next round. Duffy with the ball. I don't know why I'm bothering commentating. We've won this game. They're not going to score. Four goals in the next 20 seconds. Hajdini makes a television save as well, just so, you know, he gets on the highlights package. 
There it is then, it is full time. A 3-2 victory on the night, 10-7 on aggregate. It's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? But we are through. Stairbook Arrest will be our next opponents. Now, I can't remember if winning this game against Stairbook Arrest will mean that we'll be into the Champions League group stages again. I think it probably does, but it is not going to be an easy game. I mean, looking at a lot of the teams there, none of them would have been easy. HJK, maybe. Do I even do I even want to do this? I mean, their best player is Tanase. He, he's filth. He's actually filth. He's out for two to four weeks, though, so he might not play against us. Vice captain is Mihai Balassa, who is also very good. I mean, he's not amazing. He's good, but he's not amazing. I'm actually clicking that because I'm thinking, oh, maybe I might want to sign him. Florinel Coman, however, he is very good. He's wanted. Somebody, Bournemouth, please do the job. Sign him before we have to play against Steyr Bucharest, and then I'll be very happy. Let's just take a look at this guy as well. Viorio Simeon, who is a 16-year-old new gen. He's... He's very good, and he's probably not even going to play. I want to sign him. Can I sign him? Four million pounds. I mean, technically I could. I, I probably shouldn't. So next episode, then, will be up against Steyr Boca Rest, and hopefully if we can manage to do something there, and it's not going to be a ridiculous 7-5 match, we'll be back in the Champions League for the second year in a row, and we get a huge bit of transfer budget to spend. I might need to try and look at investing before that game, probably on defenders, because our defenders, pretty shocking at the moment. We're also going to have a game in the middle against Radomilj. Maybe, probably, I think they, I assume they've just been promoted. So that's going to be between episodes. Also, Mura, who don't even have a badge by the looks of it, is going to be between the Steyr Bucharest games. Before we go, I'm just going to try this. Going to try and increase my junior coaching budget. Good, they did that. Is there anything else that we can try and do? Better training facilities? It's optimistic. Maybe they'll go for it. Are you, come on. More forward thinking. Okay, yep. Oh, no, they're denied. Damn. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Football Manager 2018 with NK Maribor in Slovenia and hopefully in the Champions League by this point tomorrow. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like, if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button and I will see you next time.